Boldwood Presents My Year of Saying No Written by Maxine Morrie And read by Gloria Sanders The moral right of the author has been asserted. This performance is owned by Boldwood. Chapter One I inhaled deeply, sucking in a big lungful of grimy London air as I finally squeezed myself out of the rowdy, celebratory throng, who were now linking arms with each other and making up random words to old Lang Syne. The air was sharply cold and dry, and I shivered as it cooled me from both outside and within. Slumping down onto a garden bench, I let out a breath in a long, slow release, watching it cool and cloud in front of me. It was over. Fancy starting the new year off with a bang? <laughs> My questioner let out a braying laugh, amused by his own clever repartee, before punctuating the question with a loud belch. I looked up at the man, his tie askew. Expensive suit quite possibly ruined by whatever that was he'd spilt down it, and tilted my chin up. That would absolutely, most definitely, be a no. I stood and walked past him back into the party, found my coat, and left, closing the door behind me. Thank God, the year of saying yes was finally over. Admittedly, on paper, it had seemed like a good idea. Jess, my best friend, certainly seemed to think so. After seven years with the man I had assumed I would one day marry, we'd both realised that that would, in reality, probably be a very bad idea. It wasn't that we didn't care for each other anymore, but something had changed. Neither of us could put our finger on what or when but there was no denying it had happened. Being together had turned into more of a habit than a passion, and that was not a strong enough foundation to build a marriage on. Of course, just because we both felt the same way and there hadn't been any dramatic bust-up or throwing of dishes didn't mean it wasn't sad. We'd had dreams and plans, and realising that those hadn't come to fruition and now never would was still heartbreaking. Jess had tried to encourage me to get out and meet new people, but I was in no mood for company. I'd had to say goodbye to something that had been a big part of my life and I needed time to grieve. Once again, I'd been thankful for my job as an online virtual assistant. I still did all the tasks I'd done before when employed as a personal assistant to an executive, skills I'd honed over the years and was good at. But... Striking out on my own and going virtual had been the best thing I could have done. The thought of having to go into an office with everyone knowing your business and gossiping about it behind your back still made me shiver. But for the last couple of years, I hadn't had to deal with any of that office politics rubbish, and I couldn't have been happier about it. Also, I got to wear pyjamas to work. I mean, if that isn't a major perk, I don't know what is. Setting up my own business had been a bit scary, of course, but I'd started small and on my own time, working in an office in the day and on my own company in the evenings and weekends. It was exhausting at times, but I kept my goal in sight, and that magical day when I was able to hand in my notice and hang up my suits was utter bliss. Life was good. And then, it wasn't. Jess had let me mope for a couple of weeks and then got bored, which sums Jess up. Her attention span is not the longest, but it's a quirk that makes her fun and spontaneous, and I wouldn't change her for anything. Okay, she'd begun, with a mouthful of the spaghetti carbonara I'd cooked for us both one Friday night, a little while after I'd moved into my own flat, and my newly single life. Time to move on. God, that's so good. You need to give me the recipe. You don't cook anything, apart from cakes. I might start one day. I couldn't argue with that. 
so I nodded and hoped the carbonara had been enough to distract her from whatever it was she'd been planning on saying. It wasn't. I was good, but not that good. Agreed? Huh? That it's time to move on. I'm not stuck. You kind of are. No, I'm just here. And I'm okay with that. I'm not mooning over Tom and what might have been. I'm fine, really. Despite what Jess thought, I truly was content with my current situation. You're bored. No, I'm not. Okay, let me put it another way. You're being boring. Thanks. It's said with love. She grinned at me as she forked up some more dinner. My mouth full, I responded by arching an eyebrow. I know what, Jess said, her fork suddenly clattering against the side of the pasta bowl. Oh, my God, this is totally brilliant. I had my reservations and I hadn't even heard the idea yet. I had, however, known my friend a very long time, so against my better judgment, I let her continue. I've had nothing but bad dates this year, and you're suddenly single after, like, forever. Not exactly forever. She waved a perfectly manicured hand at me, dismissing my protest. So, next year, basically in two weeks' time, on the 1st of January, we begin the year that's going to change our lives. I gave a mental eye roll. Change our lives? I asked, not too worried. Jess had gone to drama school, and although she ran a PR firm now, the training and her natural inclination towards the dramatic had never disappeared. Yes, next year is going to be the year of saying yes. She threw her hands out and her head back like she'd just finished a West End show and was, apparently, waiting for the applause to begin. I chased the last of the spaghetti around my bowl instead. Well? Jess asked, looking slightly annoyed. Well, what? What do you think about my plan? Go for it, if you want. Sounds like something you'd enjoy. It's a joint plan. For me? And you. It definitely didn't sound like something I'd enjoy. Quite the opposite, in fact. I enjoyed the quiet life. I worked in my pyjamas, for goodness sake. And it suited me perfectly. The year of saying yes, I knew, would not. Oh, I'm not sure it's something I'm ready to embark on just yet, but you should totally go for it. I hoped that encouraging Jess to pursue her latest idea would distract her from remembering that I was supposed to be a part of it. It was a tactic I had employed in the past on several occasions to good effect. Unfortunately, she seemed to have cottoned on. Oh, no, you don't. Not this time. This is something we're doing together. Jess, I really don't want to. That's because you've forgotten how to have fun. I have not. I just have a different concept of what's fun than you do. Bars and dating apps are not my idea of fun. You know that. I didn't say it was only going to be bars and dating apps. Which clearly meant they were definitely still included. This was not good. Look, Jess said, calming down a little and taking my hand. You've had a rough time. And you were in the same relationship for a long while. Let's take the opportunity to do some fun things together. It's not necessarily about meeting someone else. It's more about adventure, getting out there, grabbing hold of life and saying, OK, show me what you got. What I had was indigestion. How bad can it be? Seb asked when I told him the day after New Year's Day as we had a catch-up Skype meeting. Bad, I said, laying my head on the desk so that he was left looking at the top of my head. Very, very bad. Things often seem worse than they really are at first. I made a noise that could have been agreement, but most definitely wasn't. What's the scar from? Huh? I asked pulling my head back up to look at the screen. Seb tapped the top of his head. 
little scar. There. Oh. I put my hand over it automatically. I was playing tug of war at primary school and hadn't quite learned all the laws of physics yet. When I let go, I went flying back into some railings and cut my head open. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, Jess had a right meltdown. I laughed, remembering back to those playground days. She's always been a bit of a drama queen, in a good way, though. But I think I properly traumatised her with blood pouring down my face. <laughs> she was screaming her head off. And what were you doing? Asking her to shush because I had a headache. I grinned at him, and as he returned it, my tummy did a little flip. Okay, a big flip. It really was inconvenient to have quite such a huge crush on my biggest client, but I couldn't help it. It was just there. And I'd been dealing with it just fine. After all, lots of people have crushes. An incredibly happily married friend of ours admitted to a huge crush on one of their kid's teachers. Her husband knows and isn't worried. It's just one of those things that happen in life. And Seb is my secret crush. Even Jess doesn't know about it. I am professionalism personified with my work, except with Seb, with whom it is a little more relaxed. The veterans charity he ran had been my first full-time client and was still a major part of my workload. Most clients I caught up with over email, by message, or occasionally the phone. But Seb had asked from the start if we could catch up face to face, as it were. I'd agreed, and prepared for the first meeting, as I would have done for one in my old job, smartly dressed, with makeup and hair all done. But the moment Seb had come up on the screen, given me a wave and smiled that smile, all the formality seemed unnecessary. Don't get me wrong, we got the work done, but there had never been any awkwardness, and there was a lot of laughter which after my last job I was both surprised at and very glad about. Today, though, even Seb's smile couldn't unknot the tangle in my tummy at the thought of Jess's plan. So, explain to me again. What exactly does this year of saying yes entail? You have to say yes to everything. Pretty much. He paused. Even if you don't want to. Especially if I don't want to, which bearing in mind it's me, is going to be pretty much all the time. He frowned, then nodded. You know you don't have to do this, don't you? You have a choice. I have already agreed now. After the third glass of wine, it didn't seem like such a bad idea. Now I've had time to think about it in the cold and sober light of day, it seems like a terrible one. So, cancel. I gave Jess my word I wouldn't. She'll understand. You don't know, Jess. Also, when you give someone your word, I'd bet my eleven o'clock doughnut you don't go back on it. You have doughnuts. I leant over and then waggled the bag of Sainsbury's jam doughnuts at him. Lottie, that's not one. That's a bag of five. Well, they do say it's important to have your five a day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not referring to doughnuts. I shrugged. You wouldn't, though, would you? Okay, no. But I'd also probably not have agreed to something whilst half cut, either. I snorted into my mug of tea. It must be hard work being so angelic. His eyes sparkled with amusement. It's got nothing to do with being angelic. I flicked a glance at the screen. Seb's dark eyes and cropped hair were complemented by him being broad and well-built, and although the T-shirt he wore wasn't close-fitting, there was no hiding the fact there was a pretty damn good body beneath it. It wasn't exactly hard to imagine that angelic was quite the opposite of what he might be. If ever a body was made for sin, I was pretty sure I was looking at it right now. I hid my face in the huge mug for a moment. Imagining anything with regards to Seb was probably not a good idea. 
the last thing I needed was for him to find out I thought he was almost as delicious as those doughnuts. Possibly more so. Anyway, I've agreed, so I've just got to get on with it now. Seb gave me a considered look and nodded. I guess so. Well, you look happier than you did this time last year, Seb grinned at me when I answered the video call, pulling my knees up to my chest as I hugged a mug of ginger tea. Happy New Year again, by the way. And to you, and thanks for the message on New Year's Eve. I'd just had the most awful proposition. I can't tell you how glad I was to be reminded that that hideous year was over. What was the proposition? I told him, and he shook his head. Would you have said yes if it had been a few minutes earlier? Actually, no. Not in a million years. It might have been a year to say yes, but I still have standards. Thankfully, though, I could say no with absolute certainty and belief because I, my friend, have come up with my own plan for this year. Is that so? Seb looked amused, settling back in his chair and crossing his arms across his broad chest, the scar on his forearm tracing a pale line through the dark hair, a silvery trail that ended just past his elbow. Yep. Do I get to hear this magnificent plan? You do, in fact. You are the very first person I'm telling, so I hope you're feeling suitably honoured. Of course. Come on then, don't keep me in suspense. Out with it. After a year of going on dates, I didn't want to, terrifying myself doing adventure activities I wouldn't ordinarily have done if you'd paid me, and shelling out to go on a holiday to see a level of drunkenness and behaviour I couldn't quite believe instead of a nice, relaxing hotel in some quiet corner of the med. I am drawing a huge, thick line under it all. And how exactly are you planning to do that? Because I am declaring this to be the year of saying no. Having now put my mug down, I threw my hands out in a dramatic gesture that even Jess would have been proud of. Chapter Two When I looked back at the screen, Seb had an inscrutable expression on his face. What? I asked. What? Your face. Don't you think it's a good idea? You've spent the last year hearing about every awful date, knee-wobbling-inducing activity and never-ending round of parties when you know that for the most part I'd have happily been sat on my sofa in my pyjamas with a good book. Surely you don't disagree that this is a much, much better idea? He made the slightest of gestures with his head, which frankly could have meant anything. I take it you do disagree then? I didn't say that. You didn't say anything, but your lack of enthusiasm speaks volumes. He shrugged. Right, that makes all the difference. He glanced at something out of my vision, then looked back. It just seems like a bit of an extreme reaction. I mean, I know you didn't enjoy a lot of the things you tried last year, but at least you tried them. You do spend a lot of time on your own. Sometimes it's good to open yourself up to opportunities, no matter how uncomfortable they might feel to start with. I'm hardly a hermit. Seb gave me a look that suggested he had his doubts about that. I'm not. You do like staying in. So? A lot. So I'm not a party animal. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's different. Except that now you're planning to do nothing but work and sit and read for the entire year. I'm just not sure it's the best plan for you going forward. Now you sound like one of your reports. A ripple of humour showed in his eyes. I do know a thing or two about mental health, and shutting yourself away doesn't seem like the best option. That's all I'm saying. Who said I was shutting myself away? You did. No, I didn't. I shook my head. I just said I was going to say no. To everything? No, only to the things I don't want to do. 
I refuse to feel obliged to say yes to things I'd rather not, just because someone else wants to do it, or someone else wants me to do it. I am giving myself permission to say no. Well, that's a good thing. So now you agree, talk about fickle. The serious expression he'd been wearing evaporated, and he laughed, deep and melodic, and my treacherous tummy did the flip again. I mentally told it to behave and tried to ignore the wave of newly released butterflies. I've been called a lot of things in my time. That doesn't surprise me. Seb gave me a look that I imagined had silenced many a lower-ranked soldier in his time, but I could see the softness around those chocolate-brown eyes and gave him a grin in response. So why the change of heart? I was just concerned you would plan to shut yourself away entirely, that's all. Nope, just no more bloody bungee jumping, rampant runaway segways or hideous dates with men who look nothing like their profile picture and then leave me to pick up the bill. You know not every guy is like that, don't you? Once upon a time, I might have believed you, but if my experience over the past year is anything to go by, then I'm sorry, but I'd have to disagree. You do seem to have had some fun experiences. Fun isn't exactly the word I'd use for most of them. No, I guess not. And you should have seen some of the messages from the blokes that I didn't agree to meet up with. It's probably better that I didn't he replied, that unreadable expression settling back on his features once again. I shrugged and kind of got it. Seb was one of those men who couldn't help feeling protective towards women, however outdated some people felt that was. Personally, I thought it was sweet. I knew from all he'd done with the charity, the men and women he'd helped via that and the effort he put in, that he had an incredibly caring nature. If that spilled over into what I considered a nice touch of old-fashioned chivalry, I wasn't about to complain. And I'd certainly take that over the behaviour of most of the dates I'd had in the past year. Honestly, the fact that there were single men out there like Seb, who were nice and normal, gave me the slightest sliver of hope for the future. It was just kind of a shame that he lived over two hours away, and was, more importantly, a client. My biggest and best client. This was my livelihood, and as much as I liked Seb, he'd had to be put firmly in the fantasy pile. But what a fantasy that would be. Oh, my God, with a capital O. Making a concerted effort to push those unhelpful thoughts out of my mind, I focused back on the moment. I kind of thought you'd be behind me on this. I am. I gave him a look similar to the one he'd given me earlier. I am, he laughed. I just don't want you sitting in your house for a year in your pyjamas, picking what tits out of your hair after three months. The mouthful of tea I'd just taken nearly came out of my nose as I flapped and struggled to force it back down the right tube. Oh my God, is that how you think of me? Not always. But sometimes, I wailed, my voice pitching higher. Oh God. At least I didn't have to worry about ever being in the quandary of Seb having asked me out and not knowing what to do. In his eyes, I was the epitome of the word spinster, complete with added stale watsits tangled in my unkempt tresses. Excellent. Only since you announced this plan. Like I said, I'm not planning to be a hermit. I'm just going to take time for me. Get me some of that self-care everyone is always banging on about. I've ordered a bunch of books on it. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds a lot better. Than me in stinky pyjamas with three-month-old cheesy snacks in my hair? I hope so. He let out that laugh again. I never said anything about stinky. You didn't have to, it was there by inference. Seb's grin was wide, and my own followed. I'm all for the idea, though, but I'm not sure you need a ton of books on the subject. A lot of it is just common sense and listening to your body. Plus, as you know, it's part of our programme, so if you want any advice or to talk about it, I'm more than happy to help. No, of course, I did think about that, to be honest, but I know your schedule, I said, waving a piece of paper in front of the screen. And all the things already on your plate, the last thing you need to do is add another task. 
You wouldn't be a task. That's not how I'd see it. You've done so much for me in the charity. It'd be the least I could do. You pay me to do those things. Not everything. We both know you go above and beyond on the work you do for me and the veterans. I enjoy the work and it's worth doing. And so are you. A moment of silence descended slowly and awkwardly. That came out so entirely wrong, Seb said eventually, one large hand now covering his eyes. I was trying to keep a straight face, but it was a battle I was quickly losing. Even through the screen, I could feel the mortification radiating off him in waves, and there was a spot of high colour on each cheek. In all of the time I'd known him, I'd never seen Seb flummoxed or stuck for words. I can't believe I just said that, he said, his eyes still covered, elbow resting on the pale wood of his desk. Don't worry about it, honestly. I suddenly wished, not for the first time, I was in the same room as him so that I could gently remove that hand and smile into those eyes that always made me think of melting milk chocolate and reassure him. I know you didn't mean it how it sounded, and frankly, even that's pretty polite compared to some of the stuff I've heard over the past year. He peeked out between two fingers. Then it's definitely a good job you refrained from telling me about those. I gave a nod of agreement. Am I forgiven? he asked. For saying I'm doable, I grinned. He gave me a look that was part embarrassment at himself, part exasperation at me, and altogether way too attractive for ten o'clock in the morning on my first day back at work in the new year. Accidentally? Yes, you are. Thank you. And what I meant to say is that you are worth all the effort in helping you find whatever it is that you need to make yourself happy. I'm not unhappy. Honestly, I'm just, well, after last year, I'm just exhausted. I know Jess meant well with her plans, and after a while, she did convince me that it could be a good thing. And we did have some fun times, but oh, on the whole, it was just too full on for me. That much activity could have been happily spread over three years and been enough. And, obviously, with Jess finding the love of her life rather unexpectedly partway through, I felt a bit of a gooseberry at times. So why did you carry on? Because if I hadn't, it would have felt like giving up. One corner of his mouth rose in amusement. And you call me stubborn? You are. And you're not? Not in general, no. I think you've got more of that trait than you think. I opened my mouth to protest, but Seb held up a hand. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes we need a bit of determination. Look at how far it's brought you with running your own business. Sticking out a year of challenges just to prove to yourself you can do it, and now having the gumption to turn round and start saying no to people. Gumption, that's a good word. It is a good word. Sometimes it feels like there's not a lot of it about these days, and then someone like you comes along and surprises me. Especially when I have what's-its in my hair. I reckon you could pull it off. Maybe. So, what's the actual plan with this year? Basically saying no to stuff I don't want to do and just taking time for myself and doing the things I want to, rather than letting all my free time get sucked into stuff I feel obliged to do. I really only came up with the idea last night, so I haven't quite figured all the details out yet. But you already have a ton of books on order. Arriving later today, I don't hang around. No, I've learned that. That's why the charity has only become more and more efficient and effective since I hired you as my virtual assistant. I laughed. As flattering as that is, I don't think I can take that credit. Nope, it's true. Before I found you, I knew what I wanted to do, and I was doing it, but I was also drowning in paperwork, real and virtual, and getting more and more frustrated because I knew if the charity was run more efficiently, we could be helping more people. And then, there you were. The rest is history. Well, I'm glad you took a chance on me too. As for what else is on the list, I'll have to come back to you on that. If you need a hand, then just give me a shout. I'd love to be able to help. I will, I promise. Although, I have decided on one thing. 
It's something I've been thinking about for ages, actually, but then Jess came up with that crazy idea for last year and I knew it wouldn't work. But now, I think it's perfect. And what's that? I'm getting a dog. Chapter 3 The following Saturday morning, I was sat in the waiting room of the local rescue centre, glancing nervously at a connecting door every few seconds. If only I'd had the same level of excitement on any of the dates I'd had in the past year as I did now. And then he was there, trotting along on the lead and heading straight for me, his fuzzy body wiggling and wriggling as he rested his paws up on my leg and pressed his little head into my hand as I gave him all the rubs and cuddles I could. He was mostly toy poodle, a little miniature schnauzer, and a dash of mystery. But clearly, all heart and cuddles. I think we can say he definitely likes you, the kennel assistant laughed as I picked the little dog up and snuggled him into me, whereupon he nuzzled into the crook of my arm and made himself comfortable, surveying the waiting room and looking for all the world as if he was right where he was supposed to be. And that was exactly how it felt. My year of saying no was beginning with most definitely saying yes to this little boy. You really called him Humphrey? Seb asked, grinning at the little fuzzy face now peering at him through the screen. Is that even legal? I covered Humph's soft ears with my hands. Don't listen to the big mean man, he's just jealous. You're not wrong there. He looks like he's being thoroughly spoiled. In a good way. Of course, we all need a bit of spoiling from time to time. I glanced up from popping Humphrey back in his soft bed, down by my feet, where he was now busy walking round in circles to find the exact point which would be the comfiest. From observation, this usually took him three or four turns. Right on cue, he plopped down with a contented sigh, and within moments was snoring gently. I guess we do. So, he's settling in okay? Seb had been travelling on business quite a lot over the last few weeks, raising the profile of the charity and taking on a keynote speech at a conference in America. We'd spoken by message on and off, but this was our first proper catch-up for work in three weeks. He is. I was a bit worried how he'd be as the rescue place thinks he'd been abandoned and had lived on the streets for a short while before some kind soul brought him into them. But he's so chilled it's brilliant. He loves his toys and walks, but seems happy to just sit curled up with me when I'm reading or working. Sounds like this was definitely one of your better dates then. This, I said, was the perfect date. So, how's work? Jess asked, handing me a glass of chilled white wine as I sat, legs curled under me, on her sofa. Half-packed boxes surrounded us as Jess began to pack up her little flat, ready for the next step. When we'd both embarked on the year of saying yes, neither of us had envisioned it involving Jess saying a very big yes to the huge, sparkling rock she now wore on her left hand. Moments into New Year's Day, as I was being propositioned by a belching city type, Jess was receiving a far more romantic proposal from a far more evolved city type. I'd never seen her so happy and they decided that her moving into Harry's larger apartment was the logical next step. She'd already begun turning his once sleek and shiny bachelor pad into a much more homely place, filled with scented candles and scatter cushions. She practically lived there anyway, so paying rent on a place she hardly used didn't seem the most financially wise decision. Jess stepped over a box and plopped down next to me. Good thanks. I've got a couple of new clients and I'm just helping finalise the guest list for the charity Summer Gala so we can get the invitations printed and sent. Don't forget to make sure Harry and I are on it. Already done, thanks Jess. We both really appreciate you supporting it. Jess smiled. And how is the delectable Major Marshall? I rolled my eyes at her. He's fine. Still single? I've no idea, I said. Jess gave me a look. What? Why don't you just ask him out? Because I don't want to. She gave a snort of disbelief. We've known each other since we were four. You're going to have to try harder than that. 
Okay, so maybe she did know about my crush then. That still didn't mean I had any intention of actually admitting it. I don't. He's a client, that's all. A client you talk to every day. A client you remotely watch Eurovision together with. A client who... Yes, all right, I get your point. Okay, he's a friend as well as a client. Jess opened her mouth to speak, but I headed her off. But he's still a client. Besides which, he's never suggested anything, and he's not exactly the shy and retiring type. If he had any interest in me, he would have said something by now. I think he probably prefers women whose wardrobes don't largely comprise of pyjamas. You don't know until you ask. I do, and I'm not asking. Can you imagine how awkward that would be? I have to work with this guy. He's my biggest client. I can't afford to lose him just because I have a little crush on him. Jess gave another very unladylike snort. Little. Oh, I said, blowing a raspberry, before grinning and taking a large swig of wine. That was the trouble with your best friend having known you for decades. It was kind of hard to get anything past her. So, let's talk about you. What's with the box explosion going on here? Jess looked around. I'm struggling. I start one, and then I find something else, and that feels like it should be in a different box, and when I look up, I have like 25 boxes on the go. Get overwhelmed and go and do something else. Rinse and repeat. Her normally wide, gap-toothed smile was hidden as she leant down to call Humphrey over from where he'd stuck his nose in a box, and was so enthralled by the possibility of what might be in it that he was now two paws in and lifting one back leg up in the effort to explore further. At her call, he popped his head back out, his ears pricked. His sensitive nose twitched as his long-lashed eyes focused in on what was in her hand. Reversing at speed out of the box, Humph scooted over to us and sat with a bump in front of Jess. She held out the little square of cheese, and he took it gently, swallowing it, before nudging her hand for the possibility of more. She opened them both to show him that was it. He gave a little hard-done-by sigh before toddling over to me. I reached down and lifted him up, plopping him on my lap, where he proceeded to make himself comfy. Jess leant across the sofa, placing her hand on Humph's soft fur and stroked his head. Everything all right? I asked. Jess nodded but didn't meet my eyes. Jess, if you're not ready for this step, you need to say so. There's no rush. Harry's bonkers about you. He'll wait. She sat up suddenly. Humphrey opened one eye, looked at her curiously for a moment, assessed her for cheese, and then went back to sleep. No, it's not that. I'm totally ready for this, even more than I thought I was. I'm, I'm just a bit worried that I'm not going to be good at it. Good at what? Living with someone. Marriage. What on earth are you talking about? There's nothing to be good at. It just is. Besides, we lived together for years and you were fine. That's not the same. And you told me I was the messiest person you'd ever known. I said that once because I had a hangover and had just stepped on a plate of cold baked beans on toast. It's kind of true though, isn't it? I took her hand. Jess, we're all different. I like things tidy and neat, and you are more free-flowing and take it as it comes. That doesn't mean either is wrong, they're just different. Although, maybe not leaving a plate of cold-baked beans on the floor wouldn't hurt? I gave her a wink. She let out a sigh. I can't even pack a box. But you can run a brilliant PR firm, cook the best cakes in the world, and bring light to a room just by walking in. She looked up at me. True, I assured her. I really am sure about this, I promise. Okay, I said, hearing the sincerity in her voice and seeing it in her eyes. She was. I guess all the packing started to get a bit overwhelming and then everything takes a knock, doesn't it? It certainly can do. But you're fine and this is going to be wonderful. Just think. In a couple of weeks' time, you're going to get to wake up every morning to a beautiful view of the Thames and look out over the twinkling lights of London every evening and share all that with the man you love. Plus, you get to cut out the crappy commute 
for a brief tube hop. There definitely are benefits, although the view here of next door's bins was one that was hard to beat. I hope the estate agent listed that as a feature. Why do you think I've had such a stream of viewings? Her grin widened as she leant over and hugged me. Thanks, lots. You're welcome, I said, my voice slightly muffled by her shoulder. Sitting her back, I tilted my head. Do you want some help with this? I nodded at the boxes surrounding us. I'd say yes, but I know it's your year of saying no, so I'm thinking this might be a trick question. I grinned. No tricks, I promise. The saying no thing doesn't mean saying no to everything. I feel like this is information I really ought to pass on to Seb Marshall. Oh, shush. Look, do you want me to come round with my incredible organisational skills tomorrow and help you whip this lot into shape so you can stop tying yourself up in knots about it all? I do. OK, good. We'll be round at ten. <gasps> we? Her eyes lit up expectantly. I rolled my own. If you're thinking what I think you're thinking, I'm pretty sure the way to Seb's heart is not to ask him to come and pack up my best friend's house as a first date. Jess shrugged. He's ex-military. They're usually really organised and like things just so. Who knows, that might be a dream date for him. He's been on quite a few dates since I've known him, and as far as I can remember, none of them have veered in the direction of moving someone's stuff. It's been more candlelit dinners and walks in the great outdoors. And yet, he's still single. Perhaps because none of those dates were the perfect one. My friend was nothing if not persistent. I really don't know. I know one girl got funny about his prosthetic when it came to getting intimate. Getting intimate? <laughs> you all right, Grandma? Jess laughed. What do you mean, anyway? She didn't know. Oh, she knew. He's up front about that. And he lives in shorts half the time anyway, but I don't know. I guess she hadn't clicked that he takes it off at night or something. How did he seem after that? Jess's forehead wrinkled with concern, and I loved her for it. Okay. Just took it in his stride. No pun intended. He said it's not the first time someone's been uncomfortable about it, and it won't be the last. He wasn't bitter about it and didn't hold it against her. Said it just showed she wasn't the one for him and that was okay. Sounds like he has a pretty healthy attitude. He does. Although, he'll be the first to admit he struggled with that when he was first injured. I think that's why he's so good at what he does with the charity he's been there. Literally. Jess went quiet. I can practically hear the cogs turning. What? Does it bother you? Does what bother me? His injury. Of course not. Why would it? I don't mean now. I meant if something happened. You know, between you two. Nothing's going to happen, but it would still be the same answer. Why should it bother me? He's still Seb. I'm just grateful that he survived and came out the other side of it. I agree. I have a soft spot for him, being your first client. I still remember how excited you were when you signed him up. Of course, that had nothing to do with you having seen his profile picture on his website. Jess arched a perfect brow. It didn't. Much. I was just thrilled and a little scared that things were starting to happen. Of course. She nodded in a way that suggested she disagreed with the words coming from both of our mouths. Whatever... Do you want me to help you with this tomorrow or not? Yes. Then I suggest you stop giving me grief about my love life. Or lack thereof. Which is just the way I like it. I have Humphrey and that's all the men I need in my life right now. Humphrey is wonderful, of course. At this, my little mutt woke up, basked for a moment in the praise, and then went straight back to sleep. But I just worry about you especially once I move. You won't be that far away. I won't be round the corner any more. Jess, I'm fine. You're not getting rid of me that easily. She flung her arms out. 
I never want to get rid of you. I'm just worried you will hibernate even more without me living on top of you. Hibernation is very underrated, I find. This is not helping my concern. Oh, will you stop worrying? I'm fine. You're supposed to be getting excited about this new step in your own life, not fretting about me. So, go out with Seb, and I won't. Jess, he lives two hours away. It's not even practical. And that's without the small point of the fact that he's never even hinted that he'd be interested. We're just friends. And right now, that's actually really good for me. We get on really well, but I honestly don't think we'd be that compatible as anything more. What makes you say that? Jess asked, topping up my wine. You know what he's like. He's missing part of a leg and he can quite literally still run rings around me when it comes to fitness and stuff like that. Jess paused, thoughtful for a moment. You do have an affinity for your pyjamas, I will give you that. But you're not entirely potato. Always good to hear. And you're out every day now with humps. That's true. It's not been that long since I got him, although I can hardly remember how I got by without him in my life. We're still talking about the dog, right? Yes, we are. Okay, just checking. Harry is aware how you're like a dog with a bone sometimes and how entirely annoying it is, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Good, just check in, I echoed. She grinned. Anyway, as I was saying, I've already noticed some benefits to having him. Even just getting up to let him out for a tinkle gets me moving away from the computer, whereas I'd probably have sat there, uh, correction, did sit there for hours at a time before. And then, obviously, we have our walk every day, rain or shine. I'd never have just gone out for a random walk in the rain. But now I don't even think about it. We just go. And they say it's sociable, walking a dog. It can be. You start seeing some familiar faces, and we've met a few dogs that Humphrey loves to see now. Anyone interesting? I looked up and immediately became suspicious at the far too innocent expression Jess was wearing. Oh, for goodness sake. Just because you're hooked up doesn't mean I have to be, I said, half laughing, half exasperated. Two minutes ago, you were trying to set me up with Seb Marshall, and now we're already on to the other dog walkers. I'm just giving you options. I choose the option of none of the above, thanks. Jess gave a dramatic roll of her eyes. Fine. I leant over, chinked my glass against hers, and smiled. Perfect. Chapter Four You look knackered. Thanks. Remind me to write to Yves Saint Laurent later. Okay. Any particular reason? Only because when I caught a glance of myself in the mirror late yesterday afternoon after stacking up the last of Jess's boxes, I made a detour to the local department store and forked out on a tube of touche éclat. It claims to make signs of fatigue virtually disappear, and judging by your immediate reaction upon seeing me, it would appear I have been diddled. He grinned, and, tired as I was, bits of me definitely perked up. Rubbish. You still look great, you always do. I just know you pretty well by now. I made a derisive noise. It's a bit late to start sucking up now. I've already worked out where I'm sticking the fee for that comment. Damn, worth a try. I smiled and shook my head. You do look tired, though. And he held up his hands, palms towards the screen. I mean that in a concerned friend kind of way, not in a critical one. I waved my hand. I know. I am. Turns out Jess has way more stuff than even I anticipated. Did you have to get it all done this weekend? Seb had rung for a video chat with a cup of tea around eleven on Saturday morning, as he quite often did, but I'd had to quickly explain that I was taking part in Operation How the Hell Has Jess Accumulated All This Crap and couldn't really talk. Kind of. They both can't wait to live together, and she was only working herself up about getting everything done. It wasn't good for her. I'm not sure it was that good for you. Why don't you take the day off? No, I'm fine. It's done now anyway. So she can stop worrying. 
Harry's arranged for a firm to move all her stuff and put it in his spare room, and she can just unpack at her leisure. You still look shattered. I'll get an early night tonight, and it's looking a bit breezy out there, I said, leaning back in my chair to peer out of the window. So that will wake me up when I take humps out in a bit. Don't overdo it, says the man who probably went on a ten-mile walk with his own dog this morning before dawn. His laugh reverberated around me, warm and deep. Only five, and definitely after dawn. He moved his screen to take in Scooby, sprawled out on the floor behind him, legs up, family jewels on display to the world, snoring softly as the tips of his paws moved in his dream. Classy, eh? Must take after his master. Seb glanced back at me, then back at the dog, before returning his attention to me. You know, I think you might have a point. Maybe that's why we bonded so quickly. Kindred spirits. At this, Scooby let out an audible and judging by Seb's face, pungent pop. Jesus, Scoobs, Seb grumbled, pulling his hoodie sleeve down and burrowing his nose into it. In the interest of accuracy, I'd like to point out that we're not kindred in everything he said, his voice now muffled somewhat. If you say so. Above his hand, his brown eyes twinkled with amusement. How did your meeting with Lady Carstairs go on Friday? I gave a little eyebrow wiggle. Rumour had it that the Lady Genevieve had the hots for Seb. Gossip Jess had been more than eager to find out more about from Harry, whose family knew hers in the way that aristocratic families often knew each other's business. Apparently, the rumours were entirely true. And, from what Jess could find out, this was a woman who tended to get what she wanted. Okay. Seb nodded, not quite meeting my eye. If I'd had antennae, they'd be on high alert right now. Anything I should know? I asked casually. Seb lifted his gaze, meeting my apparently nonchalant one. You're enjoying this far too much for someone who professes to be a nice person. I am a nice person. And what exactly am I enjoying? My discomfort. I made a sympathetic face. Yes, it must be awful to be pursued by a very attractive, intelligent and insanely rich woman. If I said, there, there, would it help? I tried not to grin, but with the way Seb was looking at me, it was an impossible feat. You're hilarious. You know that, don't you? It's one of my best qualities. He shook his head, still smiling. The meeting went fine. She's still keen on supporting the charity, but wants to discuss things further. I bet she does, I mumbled. You know I can hear you, right? I coughed. Sorry, frog. I coughed again, for effect. Seb gave me a patient look and I returned an innocent smile. Yeah, right. Anyway, I mentioned that we're hoping to arrange this summer gala thing and she immediately said she'll take a table, so that's a good start. He glanced away for a moment. I narrowed my eyes. Was there a caveat to that? What? You've gone all shifty. He straightened up, laughter creasing his face. I am not shifty. I gave him a look that suggested I disagreed with that. Fine. She laughingly said it was on the proviso that she danced with me. There are far worse catches to a deal. Seb dismissed it. Nah, I'm pretty sure she was joking. She'd had a couple of glasses of champagne by that point anyway. I was pretty sure Lady Carstairs was deadly serious. And from what Jess had found out, a dance was just the beginning of what she really wanted. I pushed the thought to the back of my mind and straightened my notes. So, agenda? I said, pulling it up on my screen so that it was now split between our video chat and the document he'd sent over last week. Yes, ma'am, he grinned. And I tried not to think about Seb Marshall in a uniform. I cleared my throat. Item one. Funnily enough, the summer gala, I've had some more thoughts on this. 
By the end of the following week, I was shattered. Jess had moved in and Harry had very sweetly held a welcome home dinner party for her, which, of course, I'd wanted to go to. It had just coincided with a super busy week at work, including a new client, on top of the busy weekend we'd had getting Jess's life into boxes ready for the move. How's that year of saying no working out for you? Seb teased me over the top of his coffee mug. It's fine. Looks it. Are you not saying no enough? I am to things I don't want to do. I said no to signing up to a mailing list when I got caught by a chugger on the street the other day. Plus, just last week, I turned down a week's Hindu in Ibiza for someone I haven't even seen in nearly ten years, as well as a candle party from someone at my previous office, both of which I probably would have said yes to out of a sense of obligation before. It just so happens that this week has involved quite a lot I actually have wanted to do. You look like you could do with a rest. You know what I really fancy? Enlighten me. A spa weekend. Right now? No, just to look forward to. This weekend, I want to just veg with humps in front of the telly, watch old films, and eat crumpets. Crumpets? That's very specific. I bloody love crumpets, and you'd better not say you don't like them, because I'm not sure we can be friends any more if you don't. Then I most certainly do. Is that a fib? Nope. I like a bit of crumb bit as much as the next man. You're such a cliché. You say the nicest things. I toasted him with my teacup and nodded. I'm not sure crumpets are going to cover all the major food groups, though. No, I suppose not. I will eat other stuff, too but mostly crumpets. Seb's laugh took me by surprise and sent a warming thrill throughout my body. I really hated and loved when it did that. What? I asked. You. What about me? You just make me laugh. And before you analyse it, that's a good thing. I nodded in acceptance. So, this spa thing, I take it you've done one before? No, I haven't, actually, I admitted. Really? I know, everyone and their dog seems to have done one but me. But that's the other thing. What is? Humphrey. I still can't believe you called him that. Oh, shush. He likes it, and so do I. Seb shook his head and made a motion with his hand for me to continue. Well, I don't want to leave Humphs out. My parents are off on one of their jaunts, Jess would take him, but I don't really want to ask her. She's still settling in and it seems a bit cheeky. Shame you don't live closer. Wasn't it just? I'd take him otherwise. Even though you have a hang-up about his name? Even though. That just goes to show what a good guy I am. A good guy wouldn't make fun of his name in the first place. I said I was good, not perfect. That is true. Anyway, I don't live closer, so unfortunately, that's not an option either. Do you have any preference as to where you go for the spa weekend? Seb asked. No, not especially. Why? I squinted at him. You have your I might have a plan face on, which is both worrying and exciting in equal parts. I wasn't aware I had one of those faces, but it's a good thing to know. And yes, I might just have a plan. Which is? An ex of mine is the manager of a small chain of boutique hotels, and I'm pretty sure some of them do spa days. I've also got a feeling at least a couple of them are dog-friendly, because we talked about going to one once, and obviously Scoobs would have had to come. I can ask her if you like. Oh. Okay. He folded his arms, giving me a front row view of perfectly muscled forearms. Perhaps I should send him a couple of long sleeved t shirts for days I really needed to concentrate. What's up? You're still in touch then? Yeah. Right. Spit it out, lots. Well, I'm just a little concerned that if you inquire for me, that, depending on what you did, 
Once she finds out I'm anything remotely connected to you, the rates they charge might suddenly double. His brows rose. Who said I did anything? Did you? He furrowed his brow. I don't think so. Oh, God, you totally did something. I did not, he laughed. It was just one of those things that didn't work out. Not enough spark, chemistry, whatever you want to call it. We still chat, though. She's a nice woman. Okay. You want me to see what I can find out? Do you mind? Of course not. It'd be my pleasure. Especially if I know you're actually going to get some proper rest and pampering, then it's definitely my pleasure. Don't worry. I won't let my work slide. His face was serious. That's not what I meant. No, I know. I'm just messing about. He nodded. I promise. I know you look out for people, for me. And I do appreciate that. It's very kind. I just want you to practice some of that self-care you spoke about earlier in the year. The last couple of weeks seem to have been about everyone but you. Which is why I'm looking into spa weekends. And why I'm going to get on that right now. Talk to you in a bit. Chapter 5 I may have to give you a few days free for arranging this. I pressed send and put my phone down next to me on the table, exchanging it for a delicious juice full of organic goodness and a bunch of ingredients I'd never even heard of. Good, then. My phone lit up as Seb's reply came in. I turned the ringer off so that it didn't disturb me or anyone else in the relaxing surroundings as various guests lay on lounges, some in swimsuits, some, like me, snuggled in the softest of fluffy white dressing gowns with a subtle logo embroidered on the right chest. The area was warm but not stuffy, and an assortment of greenery from small ferns to large palms was interspersed around it, providing both privacy as well as that sense of relaxation that comes from being surrounded by plants. Gorgeous! I'm still convinced they're going to come and ask for the rest of the money. I can't believe the deal you got me. I couldn't help but wonder if perhaps something had reignited with Seb and his ex, because I was pretty sure what I'd paid for this weekend was a fraction of what it should be. And that feeling caused a little ripple in my stomach. Which was ridiculous, because Seb had dated plenty of people during the time I'd known him, and it had never bothered me. So why did it send a quiver of curiosity through me now? I knew the answer, of course. Before, I hadn't been single, so what Seb did and who he saw had no impact on me. But now that I was... I gave my towel head a gentle boink back against the top of the lounger. Now that I was... Oh, it made no difference. I just needed my body to start listening to my brain. A laughing face emoticon bounced in onto the screen, and I could see that he was still typing. Don't worry about it. They won't. Secret? They had someone cancel a package last minute. With you there, they know they're getting some money on top of the other package.